As one of my subscribers pointed out, many videos on this channel start with the mention of the Neolithic era. The reason is simple. The shift to an agricultural economy was the foundation of the modern world. It allowed humans to produce more than they needed for survival, fueling rapid population growth. But at the same time, it led to social stratification and the rise of elites who, in their quest for power and wealth, were the driving force behind most wars in history. However, these very power structures also laid the groundwork for the first civilizations. The Neolithic period saw the emergence of permanent settlements, which in turn sparked advances in construction. Back in the Paleolithic era, a semi-nomadic lifestyle meant living in temporary shelters made of animal hides and wooden poles. But now, as people settled, their demands for comfort and security grew. This led to widespread use of wood, stone, and clay in construction. It was also during this time that the first fortifications appeared, mostly consisting of moats and earth mounds. But these fortifications are not as simple as they seem. Take the Slavs and medieval Rus, for example. Many instantly imagine wooden fortresses, surrounded by palisades. Meanwhile, the rest of Europe is often associated with grand stone castles. Yet, if you dive into historical research, you'll frequently come across claims that up until the High Middle Ages, most fortifications in Western and Central Europe were also built from wood. If you try to find depictions of these wooden structures, at best, you'll find nothing useful. At worst, you'll fall victim to a common misconception, one that is often reinforced by modern movies and illustrations. The problem is that wood is not a long-lasting material, and the earliest surviving images of Slavic wooden fortifications date back only to the 17th century, an era already shaped by gunpowder warfare. What archaeologists usually find are remnants of earth mounds and ditches. This led to the mistaken assumption that medieval wooden fortifications were essentially just fences placed on top of these mounds. This idea was further reinforced by hastily built stockades in Siberia during later periods, as well as the works of artists like Viktor Vasnetsov. And this belief would have remained unchallenged if not for the work of archaeologist Pavel Rapoport. He decided to investigate what lay inside these mounds and found fragments of wooden structures, specifically made from valuable oak. This led researchers to develop a new but equally flawed theory that wooden reinforcements were built inside the mounds for support. However, practical experiments proved this idea to be pointless. But science, unlike alternative theories and pseudo-history, constantly evolves. In the 1980s, archaeologist Borisovich completely changed our understanding of Rus's fortifications. He suggested that the earth mounds we see today are actually the remnants of wooden earth walls rather than simple embankments. In other words, these walls were not just wooden fences, they were structural frameworks filled with soil. This made the fortifications much heavier and better resistant to impact damage. Moreover, the soil helped regulate humidity inside the structure and limited airflow to the outer wooden layers. As a result, setting these walls on fire was far more difficult than it might seem. This is likely why historical sources often state that Russ's fortifications were first destroyed, then burned implying that they had to be broken apart before being set ablaze. Additionally, the outer wood could have been coated with clay or covered with a small embankment to further protect it. In some cases, the surface was even charred, creating a fire-resistant layer. There are plenty of online experiments showing that fire arrows aren't as effective against wood as many think. I've tested this myself. Sometimes, even a gasoline-soaked cloth isn't enough to ignite dry pine wood, let alone damp oak. Plus, most Slavic settlements were located near rivers in forested areas, where high humidity further reduced the risk of fire. In fact, wooden earth walls have ancient origins. Similar construction techniques were used in Archaeum and many other Bronze Age fortifications. In Central Asia and the Middle East, where wood was scarce and the climate was dry, builders used mud brick frameworks filled with earth. Over time, these mud bricks would erode, leaving behind structures that looked like simple mounds. Even the Moscow Kremlin, though it appears to be made of brick, has an inner core filled with softer limestone. Wood itself is a fascinating material. Despite not being the hardest substance, it has a compression strength of around 500 kilograms per square centimeter. For comparison, aerated concrete, about 30 kilograms. Brick, roughly 100 kilograms. Modern M400 concrete, around 400 kilograms. In other words, wood is actually stronger than brick and even high-grade concrete when it comes to compression. And when it comes to flexibility and tensile strength, wood far outperforms both natural and artificial stone materials. Based on the numbers I found in research, 
its ultimate strength could be up to 40 times higher than that of brick. I'd guess that when struck by battering rams, the logs would flex slightly, with the impact energy being absorbed by the inner layer of soil. However, I haven't come across any experiments to confirm this. Yes, wood is softer than stone and can be cut with an axe, but the key to any wall's defense lies in the active actions of its defenders. If an enemy feels comfortable beneath your walls, then a handful of workers can dig out a massive trench in half a day and collapse even a stone fortress. Logically, though, bringing down a wooden earth structure through tunneling would be far more difficult than undermining a block-based fortress. After all, log or timber houses are known for their earthquake resistance. Personally, I'd argue that wooden earth walls were just as effective as stone fortifications. But this raises a fair question. If these walls were so strong, why did Europe transition to stone fortifications in the High Middle Ages? The Slavs were certainly aware of stone architecture, as evidenced by the Lupshansk Fortress, which dates back to the 8th century. I don't think it was just about defense, some types of limestone and mud brick can also be chopped with an axe, but rather about durability. The combination of wood and soil definitely reduced flammability and added strength, but it wasn't great for longevity. Even though oak was commonly used for fortifications, and possibly larch in some cases, the lifespan of logs in these conditions was probably no more than a few decades. Building wood earth defenses was easier than using stone, but they needed constant maintenance and repairs. It's the same situation we see in modern construction. If you build stone walls, you can forget about them for centuries, but if you build with logs or timber, you have to deal with shrinkage, regular sealing, protection against insects, and replacing rotting parts. Since medieval European castles were primarily homes for feudal lords, it was likely easier to invest in a stone structure once and pass it down through generations rather than constantly pulling peasants away from farming to repair wooden walls. And that's not even mentioning the availability of timber. Most forests in Western and Central Europe were cleared for agriculture. Population density was significantly higher than in Eastern Europe. Interestingly, Repairing a wooden earth wall often meant dismantling its upper section, allowing the loose soil to collapse and bury the lower logs. Then, new fortifications would be built on top of this mound. As a result, the longer a city existed, the higher its walls became. As I mentioned earlier, wooden earth walls were likely just as strong as stone, and if covered in a layer of clay, they might have been nearly indistinguishable from stone fortifications. This type of fortification, in various forms, was probably dominant across Russes and other parts of Europe for millennia, right up until the High Middle Ages. However, the concept never truly disappeared. In later centuries, it evolved into redoubts, fortifications built primarily from earthen embankments, often reinforced on the inside with log walls. Soil, after all, is an excellent barrier against bullets, and even half a meter of packed earth can be nearly impenetrable. 